It's Tuesday, March 12, 2024, and you are listening to Uranium Spotlight Podcast, Nuclear's Resurgence in a Clean Energy World, brought to you by Pure Point Uranium Group. Great uranium discoveries only come with drilling. Don't miss out on the next big one. Pure Point and partners, Cameco and Arano are drilling right now. And now your host, Chris Frostad. This week on Uranium Spotlight, the world looks at restarting or refurbishing idle mines and reactors. AI and nuclear give each other a lift. China ramps up their nuclear fleet and Encore Energy starts shipping uranium. Last week's uranium spot price drifted down from $95 to close the week at $91 U.S. per pound U308. Spot activity remained sparse over the past week with no confirmed U308 deals. Amid dwindling buyer interest, sellers have persistently adjusted their offers to lower levels in an effort to entice new demand as the spot price slipped back to near the $90 level. Activity in the term markets was generally quiet as well with no new formal utility term demand. Despite the decline, analysts remain bullish on the future of the commodity, citing a growing momentum in the nuclear industry. Since the beginning of 2020, uranium prices have soared, with weekly spot prices reaching as high as $106 per pound. Although they have slightly retreated to $91, they still stand significantly higher than before. Jonathan Hines, president of UXC, acknowledges the recent stagnation in the market, but highlights the underlying strength of tight supplies against rising demand. He suggests that once existing spot material clears the market, prices could see another upward surge if new demand emerges. Jeremy Peloso of BCA Research emphasizes the ongoing nuclear renaissance with continuous positive developments in the nuclear energy sector. Major countries' pledges to triple nuclear capacity by 2050 underscore the sector's growth potential. Investment opportunities in uranium vary, with Peloso favoring exposure through physical uranium futures, ETFs, or publicly listed uranium companies. Despite the potential geopolitical risks and rare catastrophic events like the Fukushima disaster, Peloso sees uranium investing as promising, particularly due to the current supply deficit and rising demand. Overall, analysts suggest that while recent market movements may indicate a pause, the long-term outlook for uranium remains positive, driven by the expanding nuclear energy sector and the need for price signals to incentivize future production. Around the world, uranium and nuclear industries are being kicked into high gear as every week higher prices drive the restart of more mines and a desire for a carbon-free future drives reactor restarts. These reactor restarts in turn push higher prices and drive more mine restarts. Recent reactor restarts include Holtec's efforts to get the Palisades plant in Illinois restarted, or the Christian Democratic Union's plans to restart plants in Germany not to mention the ongoing and hotly contested plans for reactor restarts in Japan. Advancing an even more creative approach, last week the U.S. Department of Energy noted that approximately 30% of the nation's coal-fired power plants are set to retire by 2035, and over 300 of those sites are suitable for advanced nuclear plants, potentially tripling current nuclear capacity. With a need for 200 gigawatts of additional nuclear capacity by 2050, repurposing retiring coal plant sites could fast-track the shift from coal to nuclear, while saving 35% of construction costs and creating 650 high-paying jobs. Kyrgyzstan also has an idle nuclear plant within its borders, and the country is looking to get back into nuclear power by refurbishing it with Russian state-owned company Rosatom. At the same time, the country's president is looking to fuel that plant with uranium from its own shutdown mines, which closed in 2019 after environmentalist protests over the lack of care taken in the maintenance of tailing ponds. The president, almost immediately after taking office, oversaw the country's seizing of a large gold mine, claiming that such a move would bring prosperity to the surrounding area. More widely, the president, who is considered a populist, has claimed that he is attempting to refocus the mining industries towards benefiting local people, as opposed to large multinational corporations. Now he's saying that once reopened for mining, the country's large uranium deposits could be another such boost to the people living in proximity of those deposits. Elsewhere in the world, uranium mines are also being restarted in U.S. states, such as Texas, Wyoming, Utah, and Arizona. All of this comes as the world's two largest producers of the critical mineral, Cameco and Kazataprom, have cut their production outlooks for this year, and in Kazataprom's case, next year as well. 
All the while, the International Atomic Energy Agency has reported that by 2040, the world will need to double its mining and processing capabilities from current levels to meet demand. The stage is set for a nuclear industry revival, and it's dragging the uranium industry along with it. It has long been known amongst those in the AI industry that nuclear power will be necessary to fuel their future data centers. But in return, AI can help the nuclear industry as well, especially with developing and obtaining approval for new designs. AI industry greats such as Sam Altman are already invested heavily in nuclear energy. Altman is the chair of the board for Oklo, a company that is looking to build small modular reactors and already has contracts to do so in southwestern Idaho and southern Ohio. Now, a company called Atomic Canyon has changed the game for those looking to put advanced reactors, like SMRs, on the market in the United States by building an AI search engine that is designed specifically for the nuclear sector. The new search engine, Neutron, is trained on millions of pages of documents from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Neutron can apparently reduce the search time of regulatory documents from days to minutes, streamlining the regulatory process and fueling the nuclear renaissance. With the surging power requirements of AI, more and more tech firms will turn to nuclear power as reliable and clean electricity as demand for AI grows at an increasing pace. Microsoft has already turned to nuclear power supplier Constellation to supply power to its data centers, and Amazon and Google are also looking into or outright investing in nuclear energy. As AI continues to expand and nuclear power plays a crucial role in facilitating this expansion, there arises a necessity to bolster the nuclear fuel cycle to support the operation of new reactors. The development of reactor technology is being propelled by advancements in AI, accentuating the requirement for efficient fuel management. Essentially, a thriving nuclear industry relies heavily on the reinforcement and acceleration of the nuclear fuel cycle. As like most of the world, China's government and many of that country's companies are looking at nuclear power as a way to fuel growth and bring down emissions. China currently has 27 nuclear power plants under construction, with 54 operating, but it gets only a small percentage of its massive power needs from nuclear. That percentage is going to rise, however, as China has plans for 41 more reactors and a further 158 reactors are proposed. Now the chairman of China National Nuclear Corporation, one of the country's largest developers of nuclear reactors, is saying that even more reactors could be approved each year. Last week, he stated that China could easily approve six, eight, or even 10 reactors a year, saying as well that China has realized that nuclear has green attributes and the rest of the world should as well. Nuclear power currently makes up 5% of China's energy sector, and that's with it having the third largest fleet of reactors in the world. China looks to have 18% of its energy makeup come from nuclear sources by 2060, said the chairman. This would more than triple the percentage while energy demand is set to soar. China is currently building reactors at a faster rate than anywhere else in the world and could have more reactors on the face of the earth by the end of this decade. It will even likely have more operating reactors than the United States, which currently sits at 93 reactors, but isn't building new ones quite as fast. China is now building reactors at a faster rate than anyone could have predicted, with four new reactors set to come online this year alone, and many Western countries looking to get either into nuclear for the first time or getting back into it, uranium demand looks to soar. The nuclear renaissance may yet prove to be an understatement, at least where China is concerned, as the technology truly comes into its own worldwide. In a bid to address the critical shortage of domestic uranium supply and fuel nuclear energy, Encore Energy Corp. made a significant announcement last week. The company, touted as America's clean energy company and the nation's newest uranium producer, revealed the successful commencement of its first shipment of uranium from the Rosita Central Processing Plant. This milestone follows the plant's grand opening in February 2024 and the initiation of production in November of 2023. The shipment, marking a pivotal moment for Encore, is slated for delivery to the conversion facility in the week of March 11th, followed by subsequent deliveries to utility customers under sales contracts. Notably, Encore has inked its fifth long-term supply contract, solidifying its commitment to provide uranium for the foreseeable future. Executive Chairman William Sheriff expressed delight over the progress, highlighting the presence of esteemed guests, including former U.S. Secretary of Energy Rick Perry at the Rosita plant's grand opening. Perry emphasized the significance of domestic uranium production in meeting America's energy needs, 
particularly emphasizing nuclear power's role in green energy generation. Paul Gorenson, chief executive officer of Encore, shared his excitement over the company's achievements, envisioning further growth with the restart of the Alta Mesa plant scheduled for Q2 2024. And that wraps up your Uranium Spotlight coverage for this week. For more news and events from the world of uranium, please tune in next week to Uranium Spotlight. You've been listening to Uranium Spotlight, your weekly podcast dedicated to delivering the latest news and events shaping the uranium fuel market and its critical role in the global energy landscape. Brought to you by PurePoint Uranium Group. PurePoint actively operates a portfolio of advanced uranium projects in the world's richest uranium district and has established partnerships with some of the largest uranium suppliers worldwide. While our passion for this subject is undeniable, it's essential to clarify that the information presented here is not investment advice. Instead, our goal is to offer an unbiased and comprehensive review of recent events that could impact uranium prices. Join us again next Tuesday for Uranium Spotlight.